afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday of the second week of Easter. Are you enjoying this 50-day festival of the risen Lord, empowering you to do things beyond your wildest imagination, reconfirming your faith in Jesus Christ, renewing your baptismal promises, understanding confirmation, and being nourished by the Eucharist? Well, we're talking about confirmation, everybody. We have our Bibles. Remember, chapter 2 of the Acts of the Apostles. It comes right after the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. It's the fifth book of the New Testament. And we talked about how the Holy Spirit came to those frightened apostles locked in the upper room. You know, Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. He, he came among them in his risen glorified body for 40 days. And then he ascended to the right hand of the Father. The next day, they go in seclusion to the upper room, and they spend nine days in prayer, which we get novena. And then the Holy Spirit comes to them in a special way, which we call Pentecost or Confirmation. Okay? And the Holy Spirit comes to them in a strong, mighty wind. I mean, strong, mighty wind. You can imagine them moving around, holding on to each other, saying, what's happening? Any furniture in the room knocked down. Then all of a sudden, tongues of fire plant on each of them. And they're looking in amazement. And then they begin to speak. Their tongues are loosened. They're speaking in various tongues. They're out. They go out into the piazza. All these people from everywhere. You know, it's Jerusalem. So it's like New York City. It's like so many different people, backgrounds, languages. Jerusalem, there they are. They're not afraid. The power of the Spirit makes you calm. That's why the Easter greeting is, peace be with you. There is a spiritual peace that you have. Remember the Lord says that to the apostles, peace be with you. So Easter gives us that peace. It should give us that peace because when we die a mortal death, we're not going to stay in the ground. We're going to be raised to glory with him. Peace be with you. They understood each other. The people understood them. They understood. They were professing and witnessing to the faith. They weren't embarrassed anymore. They weren't afraid anymore. They weren't nervous anymore. They were witnessing to the faith. Talking about it. Talking about it. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You can't put a bushel basket over you. You can't put masking tape over your lips and say, we'll not speak about Jesus. But that's what people do. Hmm. Will not speak about Jesus. I'm a Catholic, but I will not speak about Jesus because I'm not a crazy person. Oh, really? Is that what you're saying about your faith? That's very sad. That's very, very sad. We don't realize we have masking tapes over our mouth, but we do. And when someone doesn't understand something, we just ignore them. I don't know, that's what I believe. How does that help anybody? Or we bash the church? How? horrible is that? Become part of the solution, not the problem. Be a disciple, not a Pharisee. You're all in. Don't be looking at every little thing to criticize. You're a disciple, which means that you're a student. Let's learn from the teacher. 
So did you receive confirmation? Let's go over that definition again. Confirmation is a sacrament in which the Holy Spirit comes to us in a special way. Because you already received the Holy Spirit in baptism, reconciliation, First Holy Communion. Now you're receiving the Holy Spirit in a special way to enable you to witness to your faith. Witness to my faith by words and deeds as a committed Christian, as a committed baptized person of Christ's body. Okay, that's serious stuff. And how do you do that? Maybe if you journal, I want you to write down how you witness and how you are to witness in the future. What's your goal as witness, as a witness to Christ? What's your goal this year? It's April, right? Today is April the 14th, Wednesday. So how are you gonna witness for the rest of this year? What are some of the things you could do? No, seriously, write yourself something in a journal by, or in the back of your Bible. How am I gonna to witness to my faith? I have adult children that haven't had their babies baptized, made their communion or confirmation. My son didn't even get married in a church. He got married on a beach. Like, how do I talk about this? Witness. Witness. You listen to other people. Why can't they listen to you? Why do you want to have a bushel over your head? Why do you want to put masking tape over your lips? The Spirit wants to work in and through you. Peace is my gift to you. The peace of the risen Lord. So confirmation is a sacrament in which the Holy Spirit comes to us in a special way to enable us to witness to Jesus Christ both in word and deed as committed Christians. So during the celebration of the Confirmation Mass, the bishop always asks the candidates for the sacrament to renew their baptismal promises. Why? Well, because Confirmation completes baptism. And now they themselves will make those statements. Someone spoke for them on the day of their baptism. Now they're going to speak on their own. So candidates, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works. I do. And all his empty show. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. They make their own profession of faith. They make the statement to renounce sin and profess their faith in God, His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the first thing during the rite of confirmation, the bishop asked the candidates to renew their baptismal promises. Then he makes a powerful gesture. He extends to his hands over them called the laying on of hands. The laying on of hands is an ancient symbolic symbol. More than that. It's an ancient sign of the Spirit coming to you. 
Did you ever see a priest go like this over the chalice at Mass? Laying on of hands. The epiclesis. You remember that term, don't you, Susan? Mm -hmm. The epiclesis. The laying on of hands. The epiclesis over the elements of bread and wine. The power of the Spirit coming upon unleavened bread and wine. The power of the Spirit coming upon you. You know how the Spirit came upon the Apostles and Mary in the form of tongues of fire and wind? The laying on of hands. And then the anointing of chrism on the forehead in the sign of a cross. Because it was the cross that saved you and me from, from eternal damnation. It was the cross that Christ was nailed to that is a beautiful, powerful sign You see it right there. Everything's about the cross and the power of the cross. So the bishop places his thumb in chrism. What is chrism? Chrism is the oil blessed by the bishop on Holy Thursday for the beauty and use of the sacraments. Every Holy Thursday, the priests go to the cathedral to pick up the new oils that will be used for the conferral of the sacraments. How many oils are there in the church? Should I tell them, Susan, or do you want to tell them? Three, the oil of catechumen, the oil of the sick, and sacred chrism. There they are. The sacramental sign, the laying on of hands, and the anointing of chrism. With those two elements, the baptized person is confirmed. laying on of hands and the anointing with the sacred chrism. You could even tell in the word chrism, it gets its name from Christ, which means anointed one. Christ is the anointed one. And now these people, these baptized members of Christ's mystical body are anointed with sacred chrism. The laying on of hands the power of the Holy Spirit that comes to them in this sacrament. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. And then they go forth and they profess their faith. They witness to their faith by words and deeds. So the matter and the form of the sacrament and the minister who validly administers this sacrament, allows this to happen. So matter, form, minister equals sacrament. Matter, form, and minister equals the sacrament. So what's the matter, what's the material for confirmation? Prism. What's the formula? The laying on of hands. Who is the ordinary minister? The bishop or a priest. It equals the sacrament. It's the same thing with baptism. What's the matter for baptism? Water. What's the formula? The pouring over the person's head saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Who? A deacon, a priest, or a bishop, or in emergency, anyone. Matter plus form plus minister equals sacrament. So there is baptism and confirmation, how God, Holy Spirit, comes to us in a very special way to allow us to witness to our faith as committed Christians, to witness in both word and deed. That's confirmation. It happened when? 50 days after Easter. Where can we find it? Chapter 2 of the Acts of the Apostles. It came to the Apostles. They were not afraid. They spoke. People understood. They weren't afraid. Are you afraid? Are you afraid to speak? Are you afraid to witness both in word and deed? Why? Allow the Spirit to work in and through you. Give the Spirit permission. Come, Holy Spirit. Enlighten my mind and my heart that I may know you and serve you and witness to you both in word and deed for I am a committed Christian. Have a nice day, everybody. Mm -hmm.